Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Team Talk, where Seth and myself talk about CCTV topics, interface and hardware reviews. Come by every week where we do the quick stream and um, let's have some fun. So first off, we're gonna be talking about encoding settings. Um, so this is our first CCTV topic that we're bringing up. Um, so as you guys may know, um, there are quite a few different compressions that these camera systems support. So the, the most widely known compression is H.264. Um, generally, that's what everything uses right now, you know, right out of the box. Um, if you want higher compression, you have to manually set it to something higher. That was developed in the early 2000s, so it's kind of a dated technology. They process the um, feed in 16 by 16 chunks, and they're Right, like I said, they're the most commonly used and they have better player support. Um, so whenever you export the, the footage at the 264 compression, uh, most video players will. will right, you're not going to have to look for that proprietary, you know. Exactly. Decoder, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, after that, we go to H.265. Um, so basically that compresses H.264 um, in half. So if you have a, um, a file size in 264 that's say you know 100 megabytes, well if you do it again in 265, it'll compress it in half to roughly 50 megabytes. Just for an example, um, you'll mainly see 265 um, in, used in Blu-ray. Yeah, just for a fun fact, yeah, and it's starting to become more and more common with um, camera systems. It, Nowadays, by default, things are out of the box in 265 compression. Um, obviously, you can change that if, if you're not too comfortable using it. And if I'm not mistaken, it processes in um, 64 by 64 chunks instead of the 60 by 16 that H.264 uses. After that, you start getting into the more proprietary compressions. Um, so High Vision, um, as you may know, we, we carried for years and years. They had their H.265 Plus compression. So that even compressed it um, twice as much after 265. Uh, the only downside though to 265 Plus was that you lost a lot of the features from the cameras, such as the, the smart events, for example. But that's really if you need just as much storage as possible. Other than that, Uniview has their U-Code. Um, so um, U-Code is basically like Uniview's version of 265 Plus. Um, but they have a couple of different versions of U-Code. So they have a basic um, U-Code, and that can actually work through OnViv. So you can get a little extra compression if you were to use um, a different manufacturer or recorder. Now, if you were to use a Uniview camera with a Uniview recorder, then you can use what's called advanced U code. And that just gives you um, just even more compression on top of that. Let's, let's get into showing you the actual um, like evidence that this, these compressions do the job. So we have our go-to high vision calculator. I use it for everything, you know, our series, Uniview, just it's a good all around hard drive calculator. So what Seth is gonna do, he's gonna throw in, um, you know, just different scenarios with the different compressions. Um, just to show you the differences. Um, so you make a pixel camera. Yeah, let's just do like 1080. <clears throat> and the biggest thing you want to look at whenever you're setting these compressions is the uh, the actual bit rates themselves. Um, so for example, 264 with a 1080p camera, generally you want 2048 uh, kilobits per second. <clears throat> <clears throat> then when you go up to 265, you want to cut that in half, so it's 1024 kilobits per second. Then if you go even higher than that with 265 plus, you can go to 512 kilobits per second, but um, I, I usually wouldn't go lower than 1024, especially at, like if you want to avoid image degradation. So like comparatively, I mean, you went from about seven days at H.264 compression, or was some somewhere right there, to about 22 days. Um, and that's actually even at a way higher resolution. I bumped up the resolution. Right. Right. Yeah, if you on that calculator, if you switch the uh, compressions, it just defaults back to the 12 megapixel. But comparatively, like I said, you're looking from like H.264. Yeah, that's good to show. Let's not go back to that. Anyway, you get the idea. You're looking at about 50% <laughs> better compression yeah, um, so. comparatively between you know, the H.264 and the H.265. So, you know, take what you have, improve that by about 50%. 
and you're going to be looking at what you're going to be expecting with H.265. And a lot of these systems out of the box, they'll set the bit rates just way too high for uh, no reason whatsoever. Uh, and generally, whenever we log into a brand new system or a brand new install, that, that's one of the first things we do is that we'll um, we'll go through the bit rates and the compressions, you know, set them to recommended um, recommended settings that we've um, figured out over the years of just working with the cameras. And we have a couple of images that that show that. So um, Seth will get that pulled up. So we have a bunch of different recommended bit rates for specified resolutions. So like I said, um, 1080p, generally with 264 compression, you'll do 2048 kilobits per second. Um, four megapixel, um, it's what, 4096? 96, yeah. And then eight megapixels, 8192. And generally, you know, 12 megapixel, we don't touch that very often, but what, that's 16, or is it 10? Yeah. Okay, just 12 megabits per second for a 12 megapixel camera. So generally, you'll do, you know, one megabit per um, megapixel, <laughs> per se. <clears throat> and the nice thing about, like, H.265 over H.264 is in those kind of... Uh, you know, weaker networks, you know, where they don't have as much data, there's not as much upload speed. Mm -hmm. You can actually use that greater compression to lower the bit rate and then, you know, have a better chance of streaming those cameras or, you know, actually getting remote access to those cameras. Yeah, it just helps with the overall bandwidth usage and it definitely helps out with those slower internet speeds out, out, in, the, out in the country anyway. <laughs> All right, and one other topic point we had on this uh, was CBR versus VBR. Um, so CBR is constant bit rate. So that means the camera is constantly sending that amount of data to the NVR to store on the on the um, hard drive. And then VBR means variable bit, variable bit rate. So that means um, if the camera is looking at an area that doesn't have too much activity, then it won't send as much data to the NVR. Um, compared to when there is a bunch of activity in front of the camera, then it'll send the, the proper amount of bit rate to the NVR so you get a solid image for what's important. All right, so yeah, we'll move on to the next topic. So this is gonna be a hardware over, overview. This will be over one of our newer products that we're bringing in from IP Cam Power. Um, it's a POE spot monitor. So it's actually a super unique product that um, I, I don't really think of any anyone else designing a, a product like this on the market. It's a monitor that is PoE powered. And the awesome thing about it, uh, about that um, is that, you know, you just have to run a cat line to the, uh, to the monitor to power it. And then on top of that, it has a built-in eight channel decoder. So what that means is you can add eight cameras to it without needing any additional hardware. Say, for example, like an extra NPR to plug into it. It already has that built in. Um, so all you have to do for power and data communication, just connect that one CAT cable to it, and you just add the cameras over the network via their IP addresses, and Seth is showing all the connections on the backside. The, uh, the first version of this PoE spot monitor, um, it, it has all of the connections visible on the backside, so it has the decoder as well as the monitor connections. Um, so you'll see just short cables connecting the decoder to the monitor um, out of the box, and you won't touch those. So other than that, it does have other um, inputs. So you can you can add a second uh, NVR to it if you wanted, or just a secondary uh, source of um, a stream. So you can swap back and forth on the cameras to a different view. Other than that, the monitor itself is 1080p. Um, the decoder can output a 4K resolution, but if you do that, the monitor will just say no support or it just won't support that resolution that the decoder can output. So you definitely don't want to touch that um, unless if you have access to its web interface, then you can um, you know, adjust it back accordingly. And yeah, that's on to the next point of this thing. It, you can access its um, decoder from um, you know remotely, locally, it's it's actually a built-in OEM Uniview decoder. Um, so if you're familiar with the Uniview interface, you'll be familiar with this um, POE spot monitor interface. Um, once you get logged in, the the only difference you'll notice is that there are no areas for storage. So this thing is just purely a spot monitor. Um, you'll get a live view out of it, and that's it. Um, so uh, you might consider this as a supplement to your camera system. Um, so you'll definitely want an, an actual NVR on site to record 
um, footage from the cameras. Or if you just want SD cards on the, all the cameras, that'll work as well. So yeah, as you can see, there's no playback tab across the top that you would normally see. So yeah, you got that. You still can control your smart events, <laughs> your cool, kind of what you would expect from UniView in terms exactly. of their their portal. Exactly. Um, pretty much full configuration other than recording. and. Yeah, it even has cloud support. Um, so it talks through um, Star 4 Live or Guard Viewer. It does not talk to to the uh, Easy Live or uh, Easy Cloud. All right. Other than that, it's um, it's Vesa mountable. We actually got some um, submitted pictures from a dealer um, that you guys may have saw post on our on our Facebook page. Um, got them. He mounted it to just a wall mount, which is awesome. Let's see, and that was submitted by Andy Suit of ESI. So thanks, Andy. That, that's awesome. I hope you guys are installing more of those because we just want to see more implemented out in the field. And it's nice too because Lithia has um, you know built-in speakers for yep. those cameras that have built-in mics. Yep, exactly. Um, and, and super simple, you know, just a PoE Plus, you know, switch um, and connect into there, and you've got a fully working monitor, spot monitor. That's yeah, super versatile for what it can do anyway. Sweet. Well, that's um, that definitely wraps up the, the spot monitor. We'll move on to the next topic, which is um, we're going to be going over um, interfaces. On this stream, we're going to be going over the, the demo Uniview interface that Daniel put together for us, and it's actually on our website that anyone can access. So basically, it's just a bunch of screenshots compiled together to make it look like an interface. And, and it's great. I mean, there's, I mean, you know, anything that you have questions on, whether it's where to add cameras or what each button when you're adding cameras does, mm -hmm. um, you know, it allows you to, um, you know, even if you want to, like, let's go back here and go into playback. You can go into your playback and see how that kind of functions in terms of, you know, clipping events, all that kind of cool stuff. So it's really just a great tool to have, you know, if you're not quite familiar with the Uniview interface, because it, it, it shows you, you know, like all those different options that you just maybe don't use every, you know, install or um, you're just not, you know, familiar with. It's a good way to get yourself more familiar with that. And like I said, it, we've got most everything in there that you would expect to see on a Uniview monitor. So, you know, if you need to know where to format hard drives, if you need to know where to, you know, enable easy view, if you're not quite sure where that's at, you know, this is just a great tool. And even if you've got a client that, you know, is curious on, hey, what am I going to expect when I have this in my house? This is going to show them, you know, what what they're what what you're installing for them without you having to, you know, get a clip or a video or anything like that. So it's definitely an awesome little tool. And uh, one of our techs here made it, Daniel, and, and he's done a great job on it and getting that up and going. Absolutely, it's been a great point of reference. I think. I use it almost daily just because um, it's just easier to use compared to walking over to an actual NVR that's hooked up and hope that it's, you know, connected to the uh, um, monitor properly. And, you know, it's just easier to do it from here. We can just sit at our desk, access it, and not, not have any worries. We don't have to get out of breath running over to the NVR while on the phone call with the customer. So it's definitely been very useful. And not only that, it just shows you where you can do um, – you know, troubleshooting as well. Um, if you're not sure where a certain uh, configuration is, um, you can use this as a great reference. Um, so one thing that um, a lot of people have been coming across with these Uniview cameras um, is uh, the fluorescent lighting actually affects them pretty badly, um, out of the box anyway. So um, yeah, that'll move on to our next topic, which um, it's gonna be our tips and tricks topic. And so this time around, just like I mentioned, um, we're going to show you guys how to um, get, get rid of those scrolling lines due to fluorescent lights on the camera. So I um, got one here pulled up. And uh, as you can see, and this is, is like, like uh, Kyle said, this is a very common thing that we see almost daily, um, especially, like I said, in those fluorescent light settings uh, are these, these scrolling lines. Um, super easy to fix. Um, today, we're going to show you doing it through the camera. Um, versus doing it through an NVR, which it can be done from an NVR as well. Um, but what you'll do is you'll log into the camera and you're going to go into setup. Once you're in setup, you'll go to image and there's going to be this option here called exposure. And um, you'll probably see it on something like indoor 50 hertz or something. You know, today it's just we, uh, we set it this way to show you what was going on. Um, but you're looking for this exposure mode under exposure. And what you want to do is you want to either select 50 or 60 hertz. I think 60 hertz is American standard mm -hmm. um, for fluorescent lighting. So you're just going to change, make that change. And the the horizontal bars are going to you know, pretty much just go away at that point. Um, 
nothing too crazy about it. You know, sometimes I do have to change it between like to custom and, and set it there, but, but those are, you know, specific situations, but generally switching into indoor 60 Hertz is going to get rid of those lines for you and um, super easy to fix. And like I said, you can also do it through a, uh, in VR and this would be a good place to show kind of that, um, web UI, because if you go on like a Uniview in VR and want to fix this, you would go into um, camera, yeah, camera. Image. image, and then you have your exposure settings right here. The same kind of exposure settings where you would change it from, you know, whatever it's on 50 hertz, custom, manual, and you change it to 60 hertz. Definitely, and that's been a, a huge breath of fresh air, um, switching over to Uniview, being able to access these types of um, configurations from the NVR compared to Hike Vision, where you, you could only really do some basic image settings like uh, you know contrast and brightness and sharpness. So that, that's been a, a definitely an added plus with, with Uniview, and we're definitely taking advantage of it as much as we can. Thanks for watching Tech Team Talk. We come by every week. Um, check out the links below. All of our social media is listed. Feel free to give us a shout. You shoot us an email. Check out our chats on our websites. Um, we're happy to answer your questions anytime we're open. We'll catch you next time.